What's up everyone? I hope you're doing well. We just had Venice Film Festival and Telluride Film Festival just start summer ending right now. But we're going to talk about the movies that have come out of that festival and are doing really well because those movies could go on to win a lot of Oscars, could get some awards recognition, but those are the movies that are be coming out this fall, this winter. Some movies that I'm going to be talking about are Poor Things, Rustin, The Holdovers, The Bike Riders, all of us strangers, Maestro, Ferrari, and Saltburn. So let's get right to it. All right, first up, we have Rustin. I have a review from Matt. He says, Coleman Domingo is astounding in Rustin. His charisma, sensitivity, and power drives the film to many rousing moments that earn strong audience reactions. It's the performance of a lifetime in an isolated biopic told respectfully by George C. Wolfe with emotional clarity and dignity. So yeah, Rustin, uh, it's a movie that just, uh, tr its first trailer just got released. And it's a pretty like interesting trailer, interesting biopic about someone that has never been told before. So I'm very interested in that movie. I only had one reaction to share with you guys, but that reaction seems pretty positive. Seems like that one will get a lot of awards buzz. Who knows if that one will get any awards, but I could see Coleman Domingo maybe getting nominated for best actor, but I'm actually very excited for that movie. Let me know down in the comments. Are you excited for that one? But we got another one from Matt. He says the holdovers, we're on the holdovers now because Russ and I only had one review. He says the holdovers is another winner from Alexander Payne. Paul Giamatti is superb as a tough teacher with divine. Joy Randolph steals every moment she's on screen and Dominic Sessa is a revelation. Each are masking deep pain under the surface in this empathetic funny and heartfelt film so yeah the holdovers is one if you guys seen the trailer you guys probably have but it was a trailer that played before each oppenheimer screening that i went to you know the trailer looked pretty basic because you know i i get the whole story paul giamatti they're going for like an old older kind of film right here it could look kind of basic, but from that review, it looks like we're going to get a very heartfelt film, maybe a very sad film. Paul Giamatti is probably going to go for a Best Actor nomination. Could see that. This movie is probably going to get nominated for maybe Screenplay, uh, Best Picture, maybe Supporting Actress. I'm not sure if... Uh, they're supporting or leading, but we could get a lot of nominations. Scott Mance, one of my favorite guys, he says the holdover, deeply engaging, emotionally resonant, and laugh out loud funny right where we need to be. A profound return to form for uh, director Alexander Payne and super support performances from Paul G. Motti, uh, Dominic Sessa, and Joy Randolph, a gem of a movie. So yeah, another great review, says it's pretty funny. Very excited for this one. Uh, we're we're gonna go we're gonna go for one more review from the holdovers. Uh, Clarence says the holdovers is a sweet, often very funny and deeply poignant work from Alexander Payne, his best in years. Uh, Giamatti is outstanding, but is also matched by, by great performances by the rest of the cast. And yeah, an astonishingly lived-in wonderful debut. So yeah, it lo it's looking like maybe kind of a feel-good comfort movie with a pretty emotional moments. So I'm pretty excited for the holdovers now because, as I said, I wasn't very excited for. I thought it looked pretty basic, but yeah, now I'm pretty excited for it. I think it comes out in November, so look forward to that one. Now we're going to be talking about the bike riders. This one is a very interesting one because you got Austin Butler in here. Uh, you got Jodie Comer in here, Tom Hardy, and it's a gritty, moody kind of film. Scott Mance, we're back at it. He says the bike rider is an excellent film written and directed by Jeff Nichols riveting engrossing consuming you feel the vibe of the last great era of bike riders gritty moody and atmospheric tom hardy austin butler and jody comer are terrific a triumph so this one's getting great reviews too and this picture right here is the only kind of uh promotional artwork that they've released to the public we don't have a trailer yet i believe we'll probably get a trailer in the next month or so because they're going to probably uh, want to push this one out another one from josh horowitz he said the bike riders is very much my jam all my favorite actors, Comer, Butler, Hardy, Shannon, looking cool and talking tough, and a good fellow's take on bike biker culture. Lots to love. One of Jeff Nichols' best, and I was already a big fan. So we're getting comparisons to good fellas, and we're going to go for uh, Matt. He says, The Bike Riders is an effective and masculine story of brotherhood. Uh, Austin Butler oozes sex appeal and cool intensity, while Tom Hardy bears the crushing weight of leadership. But it's Jody Comer who owns the film with her transformative talent, a roaring return for Jeff Nichols. All right, so we got more interesting stuff to talk about for this one. The Bike Riders getting some big reviews here. You know, a lot of these movies sometimes don't get big reviews, but I've seen this year from Telluride, a lot of the films are doing very well. A lot of them are getting pretty good reviews. And Jody Comer seems to be the winners of the Bike Riders. You know, it says that Jeff Nichols did a great job making the movie, but people are saying Jody Comer is the winner of that movie so far. We got uh, we got two reviews for All of Us Strangers. Scott says, All of Us Strangers is a beautiful and emotionally powerful film. What a showcase of talent too. All four actors are phenomenal and deserve to be nominated. The film really sneaks up on you and packs quite the emotional punch. I haven't heard anything about the All of Us Strangers. 
Uh, so I'm actually very interested in this one. Uh, Vanity Fair says all the strangers marks arguably the most expensive vision yet from director Andrew Hay. A moving uh, character study that balances smoldering romance and painful trauma. So I guess that's all you need to know. It's going to be about a lot of romance and a lot of trauma. So we're going to see you for that one. I have not seen a trailer for that one. I don't think it's released yet but now we're moving on to maestro uh, manuel says maestro exceeds expectations certifying bradley cooper as a filmmaker with a net tan talent and inspiring biopic focused on a compelling romance elevated by passionately authentic performances carrie mulligan left me in tears magnificent score in cinematography this one i'm kind of worried about because bradley cooper even though i think he's fantastic and everything that he does I think this one's kind of a hard story for him to tell, a big biopic for him to tell. There's a lot of makeup going on, but the, yeah, I think the trailer looked beautiful when I first saw it, so I can't wait for that one. Uh, let's go for uh, one more review of Maestro. Allison says, oh, Maestro, a film I've been impatiently anticipating since it was announced, and a film I loved oh so deeply, possessing the utmost love and admiration for its subject. Bradley Cooper masterfully channels Bernstein in his strongest, most passionate performance to date. So I think uh, Bradley Cooper is going to get nominated for the Oscar. I don't know. It's going to be a hard Oscars race this season because you got Killian, you got Leo, you got Bradley. It's going to be a hard one. Uh, Saltburn is another one that I want to talk about. Uh, I only got one review for this one. Uh, Scott says Saltburn is the most batshit crazy film that you'll see all year. It's exquisitely shot with a terrific score. Barry Keoghan delivers one of the most ballsy and ambiguous performances of the year. It definitely goes off the rails and it's sure to divide audiences. So yeah, as I said, um, Saltburn is going to be one of those films where I think it's beautiful, but I think story-wise there's just going to be too much packed in there. So even though I'm very excited for it, I'm excited for all the actors in here. I think it's going to be very divisive. I think it's Rotten Tomato score it isn't that divisive right now. I think it's like 75, 70s in there. But I'm, yeah, I'm still excited for it. It started out really low because it didn't have a lot of reviews in there. But it's, got, it's gotten a little bit better right now. I think it's like 70 some. All right, let's get to the film I really want to talk about, which is Poor Things. Poor Things is one that's been getting, getting the most rave reviews out of Telluride so far. And I think it's going to really shake up the Oscars race. So let's get to our first review from Joey. He says, Poor Things is the best Yorgos uh, has made and the best performances from, by Emma Stone's career. Mark Ruffalo is a riot, hilarious, sexy, and utterly enthralling. Uh, yeah, I was not expecting this great of reviews from Poor Things, but it looks like it's just getting praised a lot for its production design, costume design, makeup. Like, look at Willem Dafoe in that picture down there. He's got some crazy makeup going on. Emma Stone is getting, like, universally so praised. I think she can maybe get nominated or win an Oscar for this. It really depends how they, how everyone reacts to it, but uh, first critic reactions are pretty strong. We got another one, probably my favorite Yorgos film, unlike any of his other prior visually, Emma Stone just throwing 100 miles per hour and finding a different level of humor. Mark Ruffalo shaking off years of CGI greenness, letting it hang, don't watch with your parents. All right, you heard it here first. Don't watch with this. Don't watch this film with your parents. Yes, I've heard. There's a lot of gore and there's a lot of uh, very sexual moments. A lot of sex scenes in this one. So yeah, uh, think think before you watch this with anyone. Think it's just a very rated R film. Uh, Ren says, "Poor things. A twisted fairy tale of the wonderful, the weird, and the wholesome." A heartfelt layered coming-of-age tale on monsters and belonging, celebrating otherness with pervasive imagery, delightful dark humor, and immaculate visuals. Stone is stunningly fearless. Oh, wow. I love that review. The twisted fairy tale of the wonderful, the weird, and the wholesome. That really that really puts it, puts it all there for you. That In just that one sentence, it tells, tells you it all. So that's very good. Poor Things is Yorgos Lanthimos at his very best. A brilliantly thought-provoking, spectacular, hilarious self-discovery journey elevated by a true technical masterclass and stupendous acting. Emma Stone is getting all the awards film of the year so far. Really great film. Great film reviews right here. And last film I want to talk about from Telluride and uh, Venice is David Fincher is the killer. I got two reviews, one from Luke. He says, David Fincher is the killer is a sleek and stylish new noir thriller with many gr grimy traits a skin to Fight Club. Michael Fassbender gives one of his finest performances as a chilling, calculated assassin. The ending didn't pack the usual Fincher punch, but it's still an intensely entertaining watch. So yeah, these are our first reviews for the killer. It looks like it's just going to be really gritty film, really like noir film. But we're hearing things like it's not going to pack as much punch as other film endings from Fincher because he really tries to pack a punch at the ending of his films, which I do get. 
but I, I understand that he's not trying to pack something that big with like kind of an assassin film. Last one though is from Alex. He says the killer Fincher's assassin film features the most generic scene at 100 times before plot with nothing new to say slash add. However, it is precisely shot and Michael Fassbender is so precise with the slick performance. Still exciting and gripping to watch anyway. So it looks like Fassbender is, it looks like uh, um, um, basically David Fincher is back to his like kind of original days, kind of like seven days, social network days. And he's kind of working in that kind of realm, but it looks like maybe the plot wasn't the greatest, wasn't the most thought out. But it does look like Michael Fassbender is putting in a really great performance. We're going to see if he gets any like Oscar nomination for this one. I'm not sure. It's going to be very hard for him to get in here. So I'm, I'm not sure it's going to do well for him there. But I think this would be a really good Netflix movie. I think it's going to do well in there. But I'm thinking that the winner so far out of Telluride is Poor Things. Poor Things is getting so many great reviews. I cannot wait. Let me know what film out of all these that, that I talked about are you most anticipated for in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this video. Leave a like down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.